Hi guys, this is Marek from uh, Trip Solo, and today I would like to show you a game called uh, 1066 uh, Tears to Many Mothers, and this is a game designed by Tristan Hall. As you can see, this is a historic epic battle system, and this game is about the Battle of um, Hastings. This is a card game uh, for two players, historic card games, uh, card game, one to two players about uh, 30 to 40 minutes and this is a game where uh, two players <laughs> sit uh, in front of each other and they uh, try to recreate the battle of hastings and uh, one side uh, are saxons and the other side are normans and this is a card game but not a collectible one so um, you don't have to worry but you will have to buy some uh, expansions to it or something like this uh, you get two separate decks the game is asymmetric and yeah you you can fight with, with your friend or you can fight with uh, your uh, virtual opponent automa because this is uh, also for a solo player and what's important okay let's uh, open the box and uh, what's important is that this game was uh, designed with uh, solo mode in mind so it's not a, a variant that was like you know added just because this game was like on kickstarter i don't know but this is a well thought mode it has a separate manual like you can see in, uh, two rule books one for full solo play exclamation mark so tristan is you know well known uh, from his uh, <clears throat> Killfort series, Gloom of Killfort and Shadows of Killfort and these games are also perfect for solo play and the same situation is with this game. The design of this game is fantastic, I mean the, the graphics on cards and uh, on the box as you can see. It's also, uh, I mean it's um, all Tristan, uh, Tristan games uh, have uh, awesome design and they are you know a treat to just to look at them okay so let's open the box this is a big box and what do we have uh, inside inside we have an, a catalog of uh, Hall or Nothing uh, productions and this is Tristan Hall's uh, company and here you can see all the games they they designed and released uh, Shadows of Killford, 1565, uh, St. Elmo's Bay. This is another game from the historic uh, Epic Battle System series. This is Lifeform and Gloom of Killford, of course, the most famous game from him. And Sublime Dark, a game that is coming to Kickstarter next year, I think. Now we have a rulebook, and this rulebook is solo rules. So this is a rule book for solo mode and it's great that this is a separate you know separate rule book. It's you have to use the main one because this one is not like a standalone rule book but still having two is perfect because you can open one and open the other and look uh, find uh, search for specific rules. You have everything in one rule book you have to you know look here, look there, look here, look there, and it, everything takes too much time. So this is great that you have two, you know, separate you know, rule books. And the rules are not that complicated. Eight, as you can see, eight pages. And you have some drawings, some photos. So it's not really a complicated game. I mean, in terms of rule books. Uh, this is the second edition of this game uh, because the first one was released I think three four years ago and this one is uh, the latest one but was released uh, together with the second game from the series <clears throat> so it has maybe a revised rulebook it also has some elements that were not available in the first edition but we'll talk about it a little later here we have some tokens first player token and some tokens that you can use on the battlefield to 
show some enhancements of the units, like plus one, minus one, this is uh, zeal, this is might, so you can use it to track uh, some effects on, on your cards. <coughs> Here you have some wooden tokens. They are used to track uh, wounds and damage that you are doing to the wedges or in, to, the, to the unit on the battleground. You have two different colors for um, two sides, Normans and uh, Saxons. Uh, so this is here are the tokens, and here we have a um, dial that says uh, it's used for solo play, and it uh, it tells you how much uh, how many resources does your opponent have in a specific round. So in the first game round, if you play on easy, it has minus one resources. If you play on the king level, it has plus one resource, and then you just rotate it every round, and then you will see how much, uh, how many resources uh, does your opponent have. So this is like you know a cool addition. In the first uh, edition of the game, I think it was just uh, this table, so you had to you know look at this table every round. Now you can have this on the on the table, and it will tell you everything what you want. What you have to know. And the last but most important element of this box are the cards. Let's move this box to the side. Okay. And here we have uh, two decks of cards. You can see they are quite uh, thick. Okay, let's focus on it. Oops. Okay. So we have two decks of cards, one for one side, second deck of cards for the other side. I will, I will show you the cards, and I will tell you uh, a quick summary of the gameplay. You don't use any board in this game. Uh, okay, maybe let's take the box again. You don't use any board. You just lay the cards on on the table. Here you have three wedges in the middle, and on one side you have one side of the conflict, here you have the other side of the conflict. You place your cards in a 3 times 3 grid, and then you know you fight, and this is how it works, more or less. <laughs> okay, so here we have the cards. As I told you before, the cards have a splendid design. And the cards are divided in different uh, different types. Uh, you can have events. These are cards like you play them and you do an action that's written on the card. Like one-time events. And they, you know, alter. They give some bonuses to your units or maybe they damage, damage the opponent. Every card also has got... Uh, uh, the cost and you have to pay your resources to put the card uh, to play and you can pay for the card for cards either by uh, rotating them it's called uh, tiring the card card is tired or you can you know discard uh, cards from your hand and pay for the uh, for playing a card like this like if this card costs cost is free, you will have to discard three cards from your hand to play it. Or if you have resources on your mm, battlefield, you can just uh, you know rotate them. So you have events. Uh, okay, cool. Saxon determination and ship patrols, shield war. There are a few like some cards have more than one copy. So if you know if you shuffle them. You have bigger chance to find them in your deck. So we have events. This is leader, leader of the uh, Norman uh, Norman team, <laughs> William Fitzrobert, and this is the leader of uh, uh, Saxons, Harold Godwinson. 
And okay, uh, maybe now it's time to talk about uh, how can you win the game. The game you can win the game either by uh, defeating uh, the opponent, the leader of your opponent, or you can win the game by uh, winning at the Battle of Hastings, of course. But also you can win the game if your opponent is out of cards. I mean, if his deck is empty and he cannot uh, draw more cards, and you have then you are the winner. So there are three ways to win the game. <coughs> okay, so what do we have? Tactic. Tactic cards are cards that you play on, the, on your table and they stay there. They give you resources or some maybe... Yeah, just resources. Maybe some specific... Also some specific actions that you can use. Some uh, actions are specific for solo play. Like here, solo attached to a wedge, it gains zeal plus one. So you use these actions only if you if you play solo. Oh, okay, this guy looks like Gandalf. <laughs> uh, and the cool cool thing about this game is that uh, all the names and uh, you know the flavor text that you can see at the bottom of the card of all cards. It's a real history, like, you know, you can learn history from this game. And this is cool because maybe if you live in England, uh, you know a lot about ba Battle of Hastings. And, you know, I'm from Poland and we don't know a lot about uh, British English history. So this is a cool way to, you know, learn a lot of new things. And I always like when cards have some flavor text, even if it's like, you know, if you play, let's say, Lord of the Rings, LCG, you have also some text at the bottom of the cards. It gives like more theme to the game. It's not just playing cards and looking at the statistics. You can, you know, have a feeling that these are like real people and real events that you are dealing with. And here we have some units that you put on the, on the battleground. They have uh, three statistics. One is Zeal, the second one this is zeal, this is might, and this is the health. Mm, you know, if the health goes to zero, the unit is uh, destroyed and removed from the battleground. So we have a lot of units. And horsemen, bowmen, you know, stable boys, mm, trumpeteer, veteran archers. You can see some of the cards are very expensive. You have to pay five resources to put this card in play. And the design is the design is splendid. It's like you know, Gloom of Kilford, <laughs> but in in a real historical uh, theme. It's really really cool. If you have a card game and you don't have any board for this game, you just use the cards. It's like for me the design is very important. I mean, it's it's just the card. If you have a board game and you have a board, you have some components, some wooden tokens, maybe some minifigures and everything like this. It's, uh, you know, and the cards don't look that good. It's okay, but if you have a card game, you just use the cards, so they must look great to be, you know, attractive. And, okay, let's put the cards down. And here we have the, how do they call it? Uh, objective. You have a few objectives that you have to accomplish before mm, before you fight the Battle of Hastings. And some of these uh, objectives also have like health and zeal value. So you you can say you, you fight this objective and you have to defeat the objectives in order to progress with the with the story. And they are, you know, numbered from A to uh, I think G. Uh, and G is of course, of course bat Battle of Hastings. Um, I must say that in terms of gameplay, the, the, this game reminds me a little of uh, Lord of the Rings LCG. I don't know if you played it. You also had some uh, like location on the table that you had to you know travel to and uh, like overcome and defeat to move forward with with the story and. Uh, you, you had some enemies that you had to fight and also in Lord of the Rings LCG uh, a lot of uh, cards had uh, similar um, statistics like health and uh, might and uh, you know so this is this is really cool because 
I like Lord of the Rings RCG. <laughs> okay, so here we have uh, the objectives for I think Normans. Yeah, am I right? Yeah, and here are the objectives for Saxon army. They are different, as you can see. Okay, they start with the same one, uh, Hailist Comet, but the second one is Battle of Fulford, and here is War Council at Rouen. So this game is very asymmetric. Every you know, uh, every deck plays differently, and every part of the conflict has has different cards. So it's not like playing uh, two two same uh, you know decks of cards. So this you know adds a lot to replay replayability because you can play as one part one side of the conflict or as the other side of the conflict. Mm, there are also plenty of cards as you can see, so you will not probably see all the cards in one gameplay and this is really cool. And here are the three wedges that you put on the middle of the table so you can you know, fight your opponent. And this is a surprise here because these are cards for... I don't know if you remember the back of the cards, if you know. But this is a bonus for Gloom of Kilford. And you can, you know, add these cards to Gloom of Kilford and they are thematically uh, taken from this game, like we have Saxon Noble and Norman Crossbowman and Saxon Warrior. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's nice. And Tristan is, does things like this uh, more often, that you buy one of his games and you have bonus to uh, other, other of his games, like in the second game from the series. Let me open it with the knife. No, oh, they're so well packed that I cannot open the box. In the second game from the series, uh, 1565 St. Elmo's Play, mm. you... let's focus. You have to... you have uh, some bonus cards for uh, Shadows of Guildford. And here is game summary, battle summary, mm, like help cards for for both players. And here we have rest of the cards. Attachments are cards that you can attach to your units or attach to a wedge and they give you some bonuses. And these are like Norman, Norman attachments. And then we'll have Saxon attachments. A lot of cool cards. Here we have characters. Before we had units and here we have characters um, that we can put on our side of the battlefield. Cool design, really. They look awesome. Take a look at these cards. So many different characters and they are all like, you know, historically accu accurate. It's ton. There are tons of cards in this game. This is great. I I love card games, but I'm not a huge fan of, you know, uh, living card games or collectible card games, where you have to <laughs> spend a lot of money every every month <laughs> to to get new expansions. This game is like you know standalone. You buy it, you have it, and it's. You can buy the next uh, game in the series, but. It's like, you know, it's not obligatory to do it. And yeah, it's cool. A lot of characters, so many cards. Again, we have some events. I think it will take some time to, to learn this game. To have some, you know, good strategies to it. Let's combine all these cards and look. This is... This is huge. <laughs> tons, tons of cards. So, you know, this game looks awesome. I will I'll post a review on my Instagram account. Mm, I will make uh, some photos and yeah, I will have to play this game a few times to, to write a review, but you can f follow my Instagram and you will find my opinion on this game, more photos and more 
uh, you know, news from the battlefield. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.